I'm just going to read a couple of verses from uh, Romans 13. If you want to turn it over, you can. <clears throat> just at the end of the, <clears throat> the last four verses, Romans 13. <clears throat> <clears throat> says on that knowing the time and now it is high time to wake out of sleep for now is our salvation nearer than when we believed the night is far spent the day is at hand let us therefore cast off all the works of darkness let us put on the armor of light. Let us walk honestly as in the day, not in writing and drunkenness, not in chambering or wantonness, not in strife and envying. But put ye on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision for the flesh to fulfill the loss thereof. <clears throat> Just reading this uh, little portion of scripture, you know, and you know, so often, like, it's just, I'm 11 years saved, and, you know, it's just, I it just went like a blink. And, you know, when I first get saved, you think, you think you have so much time uh, to serve the Lord, you know. But here in this uh, little verse, it says that knowing the time, you know, sometimes we think, sure, maybe I have 20 years, or I have 30 years, or maybe if you're younger here, your sense shot of loads of time to serve the Lord, but we only get a small window uh, of opportunity. You know, life life is very brief. You know, and this is a challenge. You know, because in the period uh, between us serving and us dying is is very short. Uh, whether the Lord comes back, uh, it's still uh, a short. It's a short time. And we, 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 need to, we need to awake. You know, sometimes we, it was prayed in the prayer meeting, you know, we can, we can get very dull. We can get discouraged uh, because maybe we don't, we don't see maybe a God moving uh, the way we want to see him. Uh, but we need, we, need to lift, we need to lift our hearts to, uh, to, to the, great, the, great, the great glory that awaits us uh, and the coming of the Lord. Uh, we, need to, we need to stand faithful uh, in the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm 11 years saved, and I just thank the Lord for his, for his keeping power over the years. Um, you know, there's been, there's been great times of victory, but there's also been times of, of, uh, that you were in the valley uh, of despair. But God's hand has been upon us. Uh, we just thank you. Thank God for his goodness and keeping us and blessing us. Um, uh, will actually be 12 years this um, March. Uh, but um, my testimony is um, I'd have been brought up in a, a religion uh, that we never read the word of God. I would have went through, uh, I would have went through the formalities uh, of, the, of mass and, and just going out to church. Uh, but I'd, I'd, I'd definitely... Uh, don't remember experiencing any any great intimacy, uh, and that's what a relationship with Christ is. It's intimacy. Um, so I would have went through all the rituals of church. <clears throat> uh, my mother and father were brought me faithfully. I would say what we did, what we were taught, was we had a, a we had a fear. Now whether it was uh, a right fear of God or a wrong fear, I'm not sure. But there's many people drifting away from uh, Catholicism today, but they're not turning to God. Uh, they're going into all sorts of belief. Um, the greatest thing that happened to me when I was young was um, my mother came into the room when we were young. Uh, some woman had been speaking to her, and as far as I remember the story, all she did was tell her uh, to read God's word. She befriended her. And she said, Kathleen, uh, would you read uh, the Bible? I don't even know. I believe that God, uh, she's a child of God, and God, God put her into my mother's path. And I think that's just um, you know, a challenge to each one of us. You know, just like 
uh, the woman, uh, the uh, Samaritan woman, when, uh, when Jesus talked with her and she met with the Lord, she went into the city and told on the man, come see a man that's told, that's told me all the things that I've did. Is, not, is this not the Christ? Just a, just, a simple, just a simple way of witnessing. And that's all that woman did, was point my mother to read the Bible. And at that time then, God was speaking to my mother. And I remember my mother coming in and she says, boys, I don't know whether we're in the right faith uh, or not. And she quoted a verse in Timothy. It says, for there's one God and there's one mediator between God and man, the man Christ Jesus. And when God was uh, convicting me when I was living with Torbett, God brought this verse back to me, uh, back to remembrance that uh, the doubt uh, was already been placed uh, in my heart, even at an early age. Um, so my life would have continued on. Uh, and then um, 16 years of age, then uh, we would have been to- uh, my father came to us. Uh, I was just finishing school. And um, I... I didn't like school at all. I uh, just had no, absolute no interest in school. I, I used to actually get a prize, which is quite funny, uh, every year for not missing uh, a day of school, but uh, I learned nothing, so, uh, but I got my prize anyway. And um, I left with no qualifications. Um, but God uh, does say he chooses the foolish things uh, of this world uh, to confound uh, the strong, and the weak thing, or the weak things of this world to confound the strong, and the, the foolish things of this world to confound the wise. So uh, I have a good application in there. Um, so at the age of uh, sixteen, my father says we were moving uh, to Scotland. I grew up in a, a very divided city, uh, and my idol when I was young was following a team called Glasgow Celtic, and I, I would have grew up in. Uh, my mother uh, and father, they were, they were, they were prayed or they were play, uh, played, uh, you know, rebel music and uh, stuff like that. But I thank God, you know, when you come to Christ, you know, Christ just takes all that away. You know, there's no, there's no flags in heaven. It's just the song uh, of the redeemed in heaven. And I thank you. I thank God that he's given me a new song in my heart today. Um, so my... Uh, we were moved over then uh, because my father was originally from Northern Ireland. He moved over when he was young. Uh, and then uh, he just came, but just out of the blue. We'd been over a few times, but he just says that he was packing up and we're all moving uh, to a place called Trillick uh, in Tyrone. Um, so we moved to Tyrone and uh, Trillick was all just about uh, GA. We got involved in the GA, uh, got involved in a couple of other things. Uh, but it was around that time, just before I was in Scotland, I was starting to dabble uh, in alcohol. Uh, and then I come over and I was starting then to go out uh, and to drink. And then uh, my father would have been a gambler. And he asked me one day then, I was in training college uh, in Oma, and he asked me would I put a bet on for him. Uh, and I said I would. And then I says when I was in, I said, sure, uh, I'll stick a, a bet on for myself. And... Um, Lo and behold, the, the bat came up, and uh, that was me hooked uh, on gambling. Little did I realize uh, that the, the, the enemy was going to have a stronghold over me through it. So um, my life were carried on then, and um, um, my brother, um, we were struck down then with um, uh, sorrow uh, through... Uh, the death of my brother, that was in 1991. Uh, tragedy hit our home. Um, our brother was up in Belfast. Uh, Martin was just, everything he put his hand to, he was just good. He was quite smart, but uh, the college life didn't seem to uh, agree with him. He was homesick and he wasn't happy. Uh, and we tried to, to help him. Uh, he, only, he only had a week and he would have been off, but Martin uh, decided to take his own life. And our life was just um, in total turmoil at that time. And again, I, I really believe that God uh, was speaking into to my own life and uh, my brother's life, the way that we were living our lives. Uh, we were going out just living uh, carefree lives. And um, we started to get involved then in the, in the church. Uh, we joined the choir. We tried to change our own lives. 
But little did we, little did we, we didn't realize that uh, we didn't have the power, you know, to change our own lives. It's like uh, people that uh, do New Year's resolutions and, and trying to reform their own lives without the, poor, the power of the Holy Spirit. Uh, it's, it's impossible, you know, to, to, to reform your life. And I couldn't do it. And we done it for a couple of months. We, and then we were back in our old ways. And um, life just continued on then. And I would have entered into uh, to relationships then. And um, the, none of the relationships uh, worked out. Obviously, I shouldn't have been in them because uh, they were sinful relationships. But um, uh, the, the, the word working out because uh, I was addicted to gambling. And I, uh, there was a selfishness where I was putting uh, my gambling before anything. And um, the relationships ended. And I ended up then in uh, Bull Herbert at the age of 35. Uh, and um, the gambling had just... The gambling was stealing away all my money every week. Um, I was in good employment. I was earning uh, good money. But I couldn't... As soon as uh, Friday evening came, I was uh, running to, to hand it to, uh, to the bookmaker. And then it was you know, falling then down into you know, the despair. And... Uh, Came to a point then, the age of 35 then, I'd lost a lot of money and I was out at my friend's house. And um, I didn't know that his mother was a Christian at this time. But he knew it was down and he knew what was happening. And he, he just handed me a gospel track. And um, I just read it and I found it, I found it so certain. You know, it was talking about you know, Jesus and what he'd done and given your life. I can't remember what the track was now, but... Just remember, God, you know, it was so soothing at the time. And uh, I said to John, I says, that's very good. And he says, well, I'll, try, I'll get you some more. Uh, so he got me some more and started to read them. And then um, he says, Barry, would you come over and meet me, my mother, uh, Mary Ho? She goes to listen to Ski Church. And I went over and met Mary. And uh, she says, Barry, you know, I can recommend someone uh, who can deliver you from the, the gambling and I didn't really pass no remarks, you know. I didn't know any life without it. And then uh, she says, Barry, do you think you get to heaven uh, by going to Mass? And I says, I do. I says, I do think you'll get to heaven. Uh, that's what I've been brought up. That's what I've been taught. And she opened up the Bible at John 3, verse 3, where it says, uh, Truly, truly, I say unto thee, except a man be born again, he should not see the kingdom of God. And it was like a dart, you know, in my soul, you know, but then a couple of minutes later, I rose up again. It was like the, fl uh, the flesh rose up within me. And I says, but well, sure, that's just one verse. I says, you know, I says, the Catholic faith is the true faith. And she says, Barry, we believe in every single word in the Bible. And um, God's Holy Spirit was really working, you know, in my life. And um, I started listening to testimonies, you know, of faith, uh, of people who uh, had came to Jesus. And um, I started, I really... Uh, started to get into God's word and to read it. And the more I read God's word, I came to the point that I saw a huge contradiction uh, in what the, the, the teachings that I was being brought up in and what was in the word of God, thinking back to uh, the one mediator. And then I was looking into Hebrews and I was saying uh, that there was one sacrifice uh, for sin. There was no more need uh, for offering up another sacrifice. And uh, the church that I went to was offering up a sacrifice every week for sin. Uh, and then um, all these things were coming together. And then the more more I read through the Gospels, uh, I could see that everything was pointing to a person. It wasn't even pointing anyone to a religion. It was saying, uh, come to Jesus. Jesus was saying, I am the way, the truth, and the life. He was saying, come unto me, all you that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. So it was all pointing to Jesus. So I realized uh, that I was a crossroads in my life. Uh, and there was a war, I believe there was a war going on in my soul, you know, because it was, you know, the enemy said, what is everybody going to think? What's the people going to think? What's your family going to think? Uh, but the Spirit of God opened me understanding. Uh, and I went out to church, uh, and I, I was out for about two weeks, uh, and I came home one night uh, under strong conviction, and I was just listening to his stuff, uh, gospel, uh, stuff on the, on, the, on the CD uh, that night that I was broken. Uh, that night I was truly sorry uh, to God 
uh, for what I, the way I'd lived my life and how I'd rebelled against God. It was a deep sorrow for, uh, not for uh, the, um, it wasn't a worldly sorrow. It was a, a true sorrow and repentance uh, and faith to God. Uh, and that night uh, I got off my seat, I wept. Uh, I, wept. I don't know how long I was on my knees, but I remember getting off and uh, I knew that uh, something had happened in my life. Um, the burden of sin was lifted uh, and there was a, there was a joy uh, came to my soul. Uh, and um, it wasn't long then to, uh, my brother was on the, the phone and uh, I was telling him, I says, uh, you know, I've been going out to church. He says, um, I've actually got saved and he couldn't believe it. He says, saved? He says, how could you get saved? He says, you've never read a Bible in your life. And John didn't know that I had been reading the word of God because uh, it was just almost like the Lord kept me away from, you know, all distraction uh, and my life totally transformed. And I was able then to share the, uh, the gospel. John was going through a lot of problems with, uh, with drink. He was out of control and drank relationships and he was getting into a lot of bother. And John started to come out. He would have come out to prayer meetings and it went on for a while, six months, I would say, maybe eight months. And eventually it clicked with John and, and John trusted the Lord and we thank God. Uh, and, and my wife, uh, she also got saved. Uh, I think it might have been six months after me. Uh, she also uh, got saved. But me and Mary, uh, we were in the fellowship but uh, we never came together. Uh, I believe I, I really needed a time, you know, just to, uh, to spend my time with God uh, at that time. And uh, the Lord brought me, you know, out to a mission uh, very quickly, you know, after I get saved, you know, because, you know, you know very little when you first become a Christian. And I went out there 11 nights and I just felt God every night. He was just pounding the word. And, you know, I realized, you know, that, you know, God just hadn't saved me, you know, just, I thought that was it. You know, I was saved and, you know, I was on my way to heaven and I, I just put my feet up. But then I realized that, no, Barry, you have, you have a bit of work to do. You know, you have to grow. And there was so much uh, for God, you know, God to, you know, on this, on this journey. Uh, and that God is really blessed. He's opened up many doors, you know, to, uh, to, you know, to serve him, uh, uh, to go to many places. And he's brought me to, to many towns and villages that, you know, you know, I never thought, you know, that it would be, you know, and the enemy will try and tell people if you're here tonight, you know, and, and you, you haven't got Christ, you know, when I think back to the, the life I had, you know, that, that it wasn't fulfilling at all. You know, you would go out at the weekend and you would be stuck in, in misery the rest of the week and you, you weren't getting out. I wasn't getting out at all. But when you're in the Christian life, you can get out. You know, you can go out and have, have fellowship and have joy in your soul and, and you're not, you're not, you know, you're not controlled. I, I, today I could go to the pub any day of the week, but I don't want to go to the pub because, because the Lord is in my soul uh, and he's done, uh, he's done a work. Um, thank God, you know, how he's blessed. He's brought uh, my wife uh, Mary into my life. Uh, he's blessed us uh, with the three young ones. Uh, little Phoebe went through. Um, she was born with a cleft palate. It was a very trying time uh, because we were running to the hospital, you know, nearly every day to see her. Uh, but you know, it wasn't so much about the uh, about the operation. You know, it wasn't a big operation, but it was a very trying time because they didn't spot the the cleft palate. And Phoebe was brought back, and then she wasn't eating properly, and then she was taking, uh, she was losing breath, and she was turning blue, and we didn't know what was going on, and eventually we, they were, she was brought in, and eventually they spotted the cleft palate, and then they were able to deal with it. it was still, you know, when all, she was, she lost weight, and uh, we just thank God, you know, for for His grace that brought us through it. Uh, we have another little girl, uh, Bonnie. Uh, we just thank God for for both of them, and uh, just pre appreciate that. Uh, you would pray that God will just raise them up, you know, and they'll, they'll be used of God. Um, just thank God, you know, you know, we let the Lord down. I've let the Lord down. But, you know, the, the word of God says uh, that he's able uh, to keep us, to keep us and to present as faultless. Uh, I thank God for his keeping hand uh, upon it. I just look, uh, you know, forward to, uh, to whatever, you know, God has for us. Whatever God, wherever way God wants to lead uh, in the future, it's just about uh, being, owned, uh, being open to God uh, and being available for Him. Uh, 
And I just pray if you're here tonight uh, and you know not the Christ, uh, you're still in your sin uh, to come to Christ. Don't be listened to the enemy will say, you know, put it off to some more convenient time. But you don't know if you're going to get that time. The word of God says now uh, is the acceptable time. Now is the day of salvation. Come to Christ now and God will give you a life worth living for. He'll give you fulfillment in your life. He'll not say that the, there'll not be trials. There'll be trials. The, the, the world, the world that there's such an opposition uh, against the church of Jesus Christ. But you know, when you're, when you're, when you're living for Jesus, uh, you don't care what opposition comes because you're serving Almighty God. So we just pray that uh, these test testimony will bless you.